Pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. That first verse of Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I mean, doesn't that just feel perfect for us this morning? (laughs) Now, of course, original context is important, and the writer of Psalm 122 wasn't actually thinking of us when he wrote that passage. This psalm is actually one of a series of psalms that Jewish pilgrims would sing together as they climbed up this 3,000-foot switched-back road between Jericho, down by the Dead Sea, and Jerusalem, on their way to pilgrimage at the temple. But I think this morning, this morning as we worship together for the first time here at our new church at Centerview Drive, after our more than 25-month climb, quote-unquote, of discernment and planning and giving and being, I think we can get a pass if we claim these words for ourselves this morning. For Epiphany and for the people who will join us here and will be sent out from this church, from these seats in the years ahead. Friends, let me tell you, when I got up this morning, even even this daylight saving morning, after I had my two cups of coffee, which are necessary, and I shook off the fog, And I realized that today I would be coming here to welcome everyone to our new church for the first time. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Can I get an amen for that this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm letting my Baptist roots show a little bit here. (laughs) And you know, it's not just 25 months of work for us, is it? During the last six years, Epiphany has actually worshipped at five different locations, five, for more than a month. Of course, we started at Hidden Meadow Drive, there was the Crown Plaza Hotel, then there was Dallas Technology Drive, lately we've been at Greenbrier West and the cafeteria, which strangely had wonderful acoustics. (laughs) And now today, finally, we're here, we're at Centerview Drive, the place that God willing will be the one place we worship as a congregation for the long term. Now I'm sure, I'm sure there are other churches that have moved as much as we have, but I can't think of any right now. And I don't know, but I've been told that church moves aren't something people do for fun. Not even here at Epiphany. But you know what? We did it. We did it. And along the way we grew and we learned in the way that Only a church that moves can learn that the church really is the people worshiping God and walking together as followers of Jesus, far more than any property or building or location. And we bloomed where we were planted. We brought the gospel to the places we were sent. But still today, let's actually say Psalm 122 verse 1 together and make it our own. I think it's on the screens, right? Let's do that. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So friends, let's enjoy this day. This is a great day for Epiphany. It's a great day for us. We walk this road together. And even though, even though there were times on this journey that I'm sure it has felt, certainly has felt to me in moments, like that 3,000-foot uphill climb with switchbacks from Jericho to Jerusalem that gave birth to Psalm 122. Friends, we have made the journey. Just sit in that for a moment and enjoy it. Okay, that's enough. Break time's (laughs) over. Back to work. Seriously. Well, I do think we can allow ourselves a bit of a victory lap this morning. (laughs) I wouldn't be doing my job as your rector if we just left things there. Because the fact is, is that while this morning is the end of a journey, it is not, it is not the end of our journey as a church, is it? The truth is, is that this morning is more of a beginning than an end. 
because 3863 Centerview Drive, friends, it's not meant to be our retirement home, the place where we take a load off our feet and do nothing while the world passes us by. This is supposed to be a nursery that we've built, a place where we bring the next generation of followers of Jesus into the kingdom. So friends, what's ahead for us? How do we grow into and out of this place God has given us now that we're here? Well, this is what I see. The first thing we need to do is we need to go out. We need to go out into this new neighborhood and do what we have done several times before. What we did at Dallas Technology Drive and before that at Hidden Meadow, we need to find out why God put our church particularly here. Because friends, friends, it, it is not just for us that we're here. There's an old quote by William <laughs> Temple. He was the Archbishop of Canterbury during World War II. You might have heard of him. And he said this. He said, the church is the only society that exists for the benefit of those who are not its members. You heard that quote before? You. The church is the only society that exists for the benefit of those who are not its members. Now, honestly, you don't need William Temple to know that. You can read the Great Commission in Matthew 28, and that's clear enough. This has been true since Jesus founded the church, true since William Temple said that in 1944, and certainly and absolutely true for us this morning here at Church of the Epiphany. The church, this church, is a society that exists for the benefit of those who are not its members. And friends, this truth has implications for us, implications as we settle into our new home here on Centerview Drive. How can, how can what we have built here, look around, what we have built here benefit people who aren't us? Friends, a church that is a real church, it's more than comfortable seats and a pretty sanctuary. It's more than liturgy and pageantry. Friends, you can have all those things and not have a church. I think we heard that in our Old Testament reading this morning about reading this morning about the temple in Jerusalem. I don't know about the seats in the temple, but they certainly had liturgy and pageantry, and it was definitely a pretty sanctuary. But yet, yet God says there is no remedy for how far they fell from their purpose. We need to hear that and take it seriously. Friends, a real church must go out, and it must bring in. And our goal needs to be the same that it was at Hidden Meadow and at Dulles Technology Drive. Friends, we want people not only to be glad that we're here, we want to be the kind of church that people would miss if suddenly we weren't. And I know we can do that. We actually did that around our old home at Dulles Technology Drive. I was over uh, talking to Principal Kraft at Coates Elementary School, and that's actually exactly what he said to me. He said, you know, we're really going to miss you guys when you're not in this neighborhood anymore. We need to do that again. So how do we start? How do we start doing that here? Well, I am convinced that if we look and if we pray, God will show us. That's what he's done every time with Epiphany. He will do it again for us if we do that. But that said, there is something simple you might do today, some way you can participate. Do you like going out for Sunday brunch after church? Okay, one. There we go. <laughs> Put the chip down. Well, if, you, if that's part of your habit, if that's something you like to do, uh, make sure you do it someplace close to our new facility and make sure that your host or your hostess or your waiter or waitress knows why you're there and where you're from. And here's an important thing. If you do that, tip. <laughs> if you aren't going to tip, don't tell them you're from Epiphany. <laughs> yes, I did just suggest go out to eat after church. Those of you here this morning, hi, Diane, I'm looking at you, <laughs> who maybe wanted to go out to eat after church but weren't sure you could convince your spouse or your parent or your friend or even yourself 
that this was really a good idea, well, you're welcome. <laughs> but the truth is, the truth is we actually have a lot more to offer than just our kindness and a decent tip in our new neighborhood. Not that there's anything wrong with starting there. Friends, we also have spiritual food for a starving world. I love that one of our readings this morning was, was John chapter 6, where Jesus feeds hungry people. By the way, have you just heard how perfect all our readings were for coming into a church? We didn't choose those. Those are the readings in the lectionary. Every Anglican church this morning is reading those readings together. Uh, this is something that God gave us. I notice he does this sometimes. Rationally, I can't think of any reason why I can say that that was especially for us, but I'm taking that too this morning. <laughs> but I loved how John 6 was part of this, where Jesus feeds hungry people, because this is such a great picture of the ministry that we are called to as a church. You know, I know many of us are used to it. I mean, we may even be a little desensitized to the power of the gospel, the truth, the truth that God actually cares about and loves people, that our lives have meaning and dignity, that there will be justice for every wrong and a well done for every right, and that God's mercy is greater than we can imagine. We may be a little bit desensitized to those things. They're part of our normal life as Christians. But we live in a world that is literally dying because it has lost hold of these truths. And I know. I know this might sound a little bit like the rhetoric of a preacher, right? But I am not embellishing this in the least. We're beginning to see the results of a world without hope all around us. We're seeing them in one very obvious place, at least. We're seeing them in the mortality tables. What an NPR story I read recently described as, and this is the quote, the first time in forever, think about that, the first time in forever. The states are not declining, they're going up. They're in fact going up as much as a half percent a year in some demographic groups. Friends, that is shocking. And the thing that's more shocking is it's not a new disease that's killing people. People are really dying, and they're dying what researchers are calling deaths of despair. Have you heard of that? Deaths of despair. Deaths that need not happen, but people have given up on life. Now, there are complexities to this. I know that. But let me just say this. Life without hope, life without purpose, life without justice and meaning will do that to people. Friends, friends, we have food for that. We have bread for that, for hungry people, for despairing and starving people that are all around us. We have the true bread, Christ himself. And it's precious. It's more precious than I think sometimes we even are aware of. And it is of life and death importance, and not just in the rhetoric of a preacher, but in the real world. And we don't have to ration it. We don't have to hoard it. We don't have to hide it away. No matter how small our supply may seem, even down to those five loaves and two fish in John 6, there will always be more than enough for everyone to eat their fill. Friends, our job as Christians here at Epiphany, it's not just to tip those who serve us on Sunday brunch, but to serve others the rich food Jesus offers himself the foundation of those great truths, those hopeful truths that so many around us desperately want to believe but have lost hold of. They may have no idea how to get them back. We, we have been given this precious gift for epiphany. And it is not just for us. It's for others. So today, today it's a great day for us at Epiphany. It is a day we have worked long and hard for as a church. And we can rest in that and enjoy it. 
but remember. Remember especially today that this is not the end of our church, church's journey. And building this place is not our church's purpose. This is not our retirement home. This place is a nursery. A nursery for the next generation of people who will meet Jesus, that precious Jesus, that precious hope through us and be fed. We're here. We are here at 3863 Centerview Drive. We're here for them. They are our purpose. That is what this place is for. There is more. There is more than enough good food of the gospel to go around. Amen. Amen. Amen.